guys, I'm Dan, this is Jess, it's Thursday, and we're here to get you caught up in everything that happened today in gaming. Special thanks to a fan of the show who we actually ran into yesterday while on our way to lunch. Hi, and thanks for watching. For all the rest of you, here's today's news. Also for our fan. For everybody. Here's something weird, a new Street Fighter 2 cart is being released. Yeah, it's not that weird. Yes, but it's so liable to catch fire that the product page actually says you need to have a fire extinguisher nearby while you're using it. Okay, that's pretty weird. Yeah. Capcom teamed up with im 8 bit to create the working SNES cartridge to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Street Fighter. That's all well and good, but the ominous warning associated with the product reads, use of this reproduction game cartridge on the SNES gaming hardware may cause the SNES console to overheat or catch fire. The SNES hardware is deemed a vintage collectible, so please exercise extreme caution when using the product and make sure there is fire extinguishment equipment nearby. Use of the product is at the sole risk of the user. If that wasn't worrying enough, the warning adds that neither IM8Bit nor Capcom make the claim that the cartridge is safe to use. In a statement, IM8Bit said it understands the warning may be extreme, but it can't anticipate the state of the SNES hardware people might use to play the cartridge. So it seems it's more of a necessary precaution to cover both consumer and company. If the warning hasn't turned you off, you can grab one of the 5500 limited carts for 100 bucks that will ship in a randomized color of opaque Ryu headband red or glow-in-the-dark Blanca green. Let's talk Sonic. Sega has announced a release date for Sonic Forces as well as details on the mandatory special edition. The action-adventure game will launch on November 7 for PS4, Xbox One and PC. While Sonic Mania took Sonic back to its 2D blast process roots, Forces is a mixture of 2D and 3D gameplay where you can play as classic and modern Sonic, as well as a custom character. Now I know what you're all thinking. I sure hope I can dress up my custom speed hug in branded items from Sega's other popular franchises. Well, I've got good news. If you pick up the special edition of Sonic Forces, you'll get a custom controller skin and access to five in-game outfits inspired by Persona. 5, Jet Set Radio, Knights, Super Monkey Ball, and Puyo Puyo. The special edition will set you back 40 bucks, and you can pre-order it right now if you're so inclined. Finally, in more Sonic news, Sonic Mania on PC has been met with criticism over its use of the Denuvo DRM system. The anti-tamper DRM requires an always online internet connection in Sonic Mania, which Sega has blamed on a bug and since fixed. The copy protection was also never mentioned in Sonic Mania's Steam page, which has now been resolved. Denuvo is a constant source of ire from PC gamers, as its installation can impact the performance of a game. So while you can now play Sonic Mania on PC offline, it still requires the installation of Denuvo. Let us know in the comments below what you think of this one and what your ideal copy protection situation is. Obviously, ideal DRM situation is no DRM. Yes. Obviously. But <laughs> it's here to stay. It's going to be around for a little while until people find a one that works. I mean, set a project. It seems like they cracked it with Witcher 3. It was offer a good product and don't yeah. put DRM on it. Well, their solution is no DRM, which mm -hmm. is uh, they run goodoldgames.com, which is basically their whole motto is there is no DRM. Personally, I mean, PC gamers are very particular about what goes on their system, which is why there is so much controversy around Denuvo. Yeah, I mean, stuff like Uplay gets installed uh, and it you know slows down games, makes it harder to get in and actually play stuff that you've bought, especially single player games. I think the problem is that there are platforms even Steam, I'm not a particularly big fan of. I was a very late Steam adopter. I get like having all your stuff in one place is very convenient, but I don't like having to play my games through a platform. And then when it goes the other direction with, you know, platforms that aren't as good as Steam, like Origin or Uplay, especially in their older editions, then it becomes a hurdle into playing a game. And DRM can be like that too, especially when it demands always online. Yeah, which for isn't us... Isn't a reality for everybody. Exactly, because us in Australia, we have very, very sporty internet connections. Even, our, even in our office, we have somewhat crappy internet compared to the rest of the world. Yeah. So it is hard to really enforce it always online worldwide, I think. I think basically people just want to be able to play the games they buy. You know, when you're dropping 50 to to $100 on a game, you just want to be able to play that game and not have a bunch of added software or platform hurdles. To be fair though, some DRM's really funny. Like in Batman, when uh, his cape wouldn't open and you just fall to your death. That was really, that was really More good. of that and I will accept DRM. That was a good one. <laughs> that is everything we got for you guys today. Do let us know your thoughts on today's stories down in that comment section and we'll be back tomorrow with the top five stories of the entire week. So come by then if you need to get all caught up and... Um, See you guys then. See you guys then.